This presentation looks at predicting or explaining the differences in boiling point between different substances. By the end of the presentation, given some different substances, you ought to be able to give a detailed step-by-step -step explanation for any difference in their boiling point. Before we talk about the steps involved in the explanation, we need to spend a moment thinking about what we mean when we talk about changes of state such as boiling. If we think about changes from solid to liquid to gas, we're talking about overcoming some form of bond or attraction between particles. So moving from a solid to a liquid, we need to break the attractions between the particles enough for the particles to be able to move around. When we're moving from a liquid to a gas, we need to further break the attractions enough for the particles to now move apart from each other. If we're talking about a covalent molecular substance, then when changes of state happen, what we're not doing is breaking the covalent bonds within the molecule. Instead, we need to break the intermolecular bonds between molecules. So, for instance, when you're boiling water, we're not breaking the bonds between the hydrogen and the oxygen within the water molecule. We're breaking the intermolecular bonds, hydrogen bonds to be specific, between the water molecules. If we were to be talking about an, a substance other than covalent molecular, we'd need to think about completely different bonds, and we wouldn't be talking about intermolecular bonding at all. So, for instance, if we're melting a metal, in that case, what we're doing is we're breaking the metallic bonds between the metal atoms in the giant lattice structure. And so intermolecular bonding would not be a feature of the conversation at all. To introduce the steps involved in the explanation, we'll consider the two substances drawn here. On the left, methane, CH4, and on the right, ammonia, NH3. The first step is always to clearly state the type of bond that would be broken when the change of state happened. Now, both of these substances are covalent molecular substances. So the kind of bonds we're talking about will be intermolecular bonds between the molecules. Let's look at the methane first. Only carbon and hydrogen, so it's a non-polar molecule. Intermolecular bonds in that case have to be instantaneous dipole, induced dipole, intermolecular bonds only. We'll turn our attention to the ammonia on the right. This has hydrogen attached to nitrogen, and so we're going to be able to have hydrogen bonds between ammonia molecules. Having decided on the type of bond that will break during the change of state for each of the two substances, we need to now clearly compare the strength of those two types of bond. It's very important that we do make a clear comparison. We don't just say that one is strong or that one is weak, but that we compare them directly. Our two types were instantaneous dipole, induced dipole for the, for the methane, and hydrogen bonding for the ammonia. And if you remember, out of those two, hydrogen bonds are definitely stronger. Having compared the strength of the bonds we're breaking, we now need to talk about energy and the amount of energy required to break those bonds. Here again we need to make a comparison. We're not talking about specific values, just more energy or less energy. We said the instantaneous dipole induced dipole intermolecular bonds between the methane were weaker. So we can carry on from that to say that it'll require less energy to break those intermolecular bonds when we separate the molecules during boiling. For the ammonia with the hydrogen bonding, more energy needed to break the intermolecular bonds to separate the molecules during the boiling process. Having discussed the amount of energy needed to break the bonds between the molecules, we can now finally draw our conclusion about the boiling point.
For the methane, we said it would take less energy to break the intermolecular bonds. And it follows, then, that we can expect this one to have the lower boiling point. For the ammonia, we said more energy to break the intermolecular bonds. And so it follows that this will have the higher boiling point. With exam questions on this, do make sure you read the question carefully and see what exactly it's asking you to explore. Sometimes it might ask you to suggest which one is more likely to be a gas at room temperature. In that case, rather than saying that the methane would have the lower boiling point, you would say this one would be more likely to be a gas than the ammonia. Other times it'll tell you that one of them is a gas and one of them is a liquid at room temperature. And in that case, you can talk about the one that's a gas having enough energy at room temperature to break the intermolecular bonds, whereas the one that's a liquid at room temperature, they're not being enough energy to break the intermolecular bonds at that temperature. Here's another pair of molecules in order to explore this skill further. If we look at the molecule on the left, it's hexane. Carbons and hydrogens only, so instantaneous dipole, induced dipole intermolecular bonds between molecules. If we look at the molecule on the right, 2,3-dimethylbutane, also carbons and hydrogens only, and so instantaneous dipole, induced dipole intermolecular bonds between the molecules. This seems to throw a bit of a spanner in the works. We can't obviously comment that one type of intermolecular bonding is stronger or weaker than the other type. So we need to remember here that there's some factors that affect the strength of the intermolecular bonds. Looking at the molecule on the left, we see that it's a straight chain molecule, which allows the molecules to pack closely. The one on the right branched molecule, and so the packing won't be as close between the molecules. This then has an effect on the intermolecular bonds. For the hexane on the left, the intermolecular bonds will have more effect because the molecules are closer together. For the one on the right, the intermolecular bonds will have less effect because the molecules can't pack as closely. We're now sort of back on familiar territory and can talk about energy. So for the hexane on the left, more energy needed to break the intermolecular bonds between the molecules. And for the branched 2,3-dimethylbutane on the right, less energy needed to break the intermolecular bonds. And so finally, we can reach our conclusion. The hexane will have the higher boiling point. The 2,3-dimethylbutane will have the lower boiling point. Here's a final example, and one that can act as a bit of a warning for us. It's very tempting, having thought a lot about intermolecular bonding, to always be on the lookout for hydrogen bonding, and think that as soon as you've spotted it, you know which substance has the higher boiling point. On the right, we've got water, and water does do hydrogen bonding between its molecules, so it might be tempting to think that that will have the higher boiling point. But let's look at the substance on the left. It's potassium oxide. That's a metal and a non-metal. And so the bonding won't be covalent at all. It'll be ionic. That means there'll be ions present, not molecules. And so we're not going to be talking about intermolecular bonding for the potassium oxide. Let's work through the explanation step by step. So for the potassium oxide, we can say it is ionic bonding and a giant lattice structure. For the water, covalent bonding with simple molecules. In terms of what needs to be broken for a change of state, for the potassium oxide, we're breaking ionic bonds between the ions. For the water, we're breaking hydrogen bonds between the molecules. Despite hydrogen bonds being the strongest type of intermolecular bonding, ionic bonds are stronger than any type of intermolecular bonding. So we can say that the potassium oxide has the stronger bonds that need to be broken, and the water has the weaker bonds to break.
This leads us on to energy for the potassium oxide, more energy to break the bonds, and hence a higher melting point. For the water, less energy to break the bonds, and so the lower melting point. To finish with, here's a question for you. Two substances, on the left, fluoromethane, CH3F, and on the right, fluorine, F2. Your job is to predict, with a full explanation, which of these two will have the higher boiling point.